all your base had done inside of Maya. The next step is going to be going into ZBrush, this is ZBrush, and sculpting on the head. To sculpt, to deform it, to shape it out to what the end result is going to look like. So one of those tools that would help is a tablet. So we have tablets here, you can use tablets. Um, if you've never used a tablet and you graduate, that's kind of a, a, it's a shame, really, because you, most people who do computer artwork use a tablet, okay? Um, I've even seen people try to use their mouse or their uh, touchpad on their laptop, and it just it takes too long. You can't have the same control you would with a tablet. Um, the mouse is the next step, but still not as good as a tablet, okay? So here's ZBrush. So just a little background about it is ZBrush is a... Um, a drawing program. That's what it initially started off as. So inside here I have just the default set up and if I click and drag I'm going to make a new document. Something happened. There we go. So if I click and drag what this is doing is that it's painting these square shapes. Now what it's doing different than like Photoshop is doing it's actually uh, registering a depth to them. So as I paint it's actually like stacking these on top of each other making it appear that there's a height to it. So as I paint, it actually feels like there's a height or a depth to these things, where Photoshop obviously wouldn't do that. Um, on every brush that I use, if I hold down the Alt key, that does the opposite. So if I hold Alt and drag, what it's going to do is instead of pulling it up, it's going to push it down, okay? All right, so now this looks like it's 3D, but it's actually not 3D. This is, again, just fake, two, or fake 3D on a 2D image which is what we call 2.5D, so like After Effects has 2.5D. Um, so I can't spin around this, this isn't a 3D object, this is basically just nothing. So then they got the idea, well what if we took the same idea of sculpting in 3D, or 2.5D, and we actually made it 3D, so we could sculpt in a 3D environment. So if I go over here to this um, cylinder, there we go, sinking, maybe. Good time to mention, um, ZBrush has a 45 day demo, so we have less than 45 days left of class, so you should be covered if you wanted to download it and play with it at home. We're using 4R7, uh, version 4, release 7, um, if that matters to you. All right, so I'm gonna drag a cylinder, and you can see that this cylinder actually feels more like a 3D cylinder, like something we would have created inside Maya. If I drag another cylinder though, you can see how that one looks like it's coming at a different angle. Again, looks 3D, again, looks 3D, okay? But none of these are actually, again, 3D because what we're doing is we're drawing flat objects that look 3D on a flat plane, <clears throat> okay? So I have to tell <clears throat> ZBrush that I want to work in 3D. So I'm gonna just clear my document again. I'm gonna drag a cylinder and I'm gonna come up here to where this says edit. And edit means put me in 3D mode. So I hit edit. Once I do that, this box highlights around there. So we have this white box. And now I could spin around, okay? Now the controls are a little bit different than Maya. Maya uses alt and the left click and then the middle click and then the right click. ZBrush uses alt, control, and the right mouse button to do its stuff. So if I right mouse button click and drag, it spins around. Now I have to be off the object to do that. Okay, you don't have to, uh, but it helps. If I hold Alt and I right click and drag, it allows me to move the object, just like in Maya. If I control, right and drag, it allows me to zoom in and out, okay? So once you've, just like Maya, once you've kind of switched your brain over into that feature, it becomes a lot easier to do. Now I can't do anything really on this thing yet. Um, this is a 3D object, sure, but if I try to do anything, it's gonna give me an error, okay? This cylinder is basically just a shape. It's not actually a polygon. It's just like a representation of a cylinder. So I have to say, make this a poly mesh. So now this is a poly mesh. So if I go in here and I click and drag, you can see how I'm actually deforming that surface a little bit, okay? And as I spin around, you can see how it's making that surface actually bumping out. It's actually pulling it out. Okay, just like I showed on the face, um, how we can use that smooth brush to smooth out some areas or some of the other brushes. This is basically what it's doing. Now there's not a whole lot of divisions on here. That's why it looks so blocky because there's nothing really there. It's just like a bunch of um, tiny faces. And wherever there's a vertex, that's where I can pull stuff out. But if there's no vertex, like right here in the middle, there's none, I can't do anything. 
okay? So, oops. So what I need to do is not do that. What am I doing? There we go. Um, what I need to do is add more divisions to this. I keep hitting the space bar. That's what space bar does, brings that up. Um, so what I want to do is add more divisions. So some hotkeys, um, control D, that adds divisions. Look up here on the top right, and as I added those divisions, <clears throat> you'll see that it basically it took that number, it was like 500 or so, and it multiplies it times four. Because if you have one face, it cuts it this way and cuts it that way. So every face is getting four times the vertices. So now I have vertices up here that I could actually start to sculpt. And I have more down here. The more vertices you have, the more detail you can add to it. So if you want to have a character where you're actually going down into like the pore level where you're sculpting in pores on their face, you would have to have millions of polygons there. Maya can't handle millions of polygons. ZBrush can. So every time I hit Control D, it's subdividing it again and again and again, and it's multiplying it times four each time, okay? So now we're at two million, you can't really see it because I have right there, two million uh, polygons. And as I come in here and I paint, you can see how smooth this is going across that surface now. Because I have enough divisions to encounter enough deformation on there. I can hit Control D again. Now we should go to 8 million. There we go. And I could still sculpt, and it's going to be even smoother. Now, if we were in Maya and I brought in anything that's 8 million, it's just going to lock the station up. It just doesn't want to play nice at all. So ZBrush is where uh, whatever they're doing is wonderful because it lets us do this kind of thing. Okay, so we can sculpt on this and deform it and shape it to whatever we want. So if you think of something like a um, like a statue, like let's say you model this really awesome statue, but then you're like, well, now I want to add in, in like little pits that are cut out of there. Or I want to add in some cracks or whatever else. You have to really define that mesh a lot more, add a lot of divisions in there so you can sculpt all that stuff. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm just going to zip over to the clean side and I'm going to play with some of these brushes here. So these up here are the settings for the brush. So we have focal shift. So look at my brush. Uh, let me make it bigger. I'm going to draw size, which is my brush size. And you'll see how I have a big circle. You can't see it because my background is too dark. Um, document. Color, background. There's seven trillion menus in here and you just have to find the right menu to get what you want to. One of these has background in it uh, and my mind is gone at the moment. Background, there it is, cool. All right, so here is a uh, two circles, right? We have an outer and an inner. So like Photoshop, you have a softness to your brush. That's what that's controlling um, with this focal shift. So as I drag this left and right, it makes it crisper. So my brush is going further to the left so there's less feathering. As I go to the right, there's going to be more feathering, okay? So again, something you'd want to play with as you're painting because sometimes you need crisp detail, sometimes you need softer detail. If I go this way, shrink my brush down a bit, you can see the kind of shape that I'm getting here. And if I pull that up, you can see the kind of shape I'm getting there. That's like way too soft. <laughs> there we go. And that's in the middle. Okay, so again, stuff that you need to play with as you're working with it. So draw size is obviously the size of our brush. That's the size of what we're painting on or with. And then the Z intensity is how much we're pulling it off the surface or pushing it into the surface. So 25 is where I'm at. If I crank this up to 100, which is the max, you can see how big that's going to pull it off the surface. Again, it's kind of like a per item that you're doing. Uh, if you're doing like dragon scales, you may have that Z intensity up high, but if you're doing skin pores, that might be down really low, right? So um, that's what these are going to do. Now all of these, if you look to the far right of where it says Z intensity, there's a letter U. If I go by draw size, there's a letter S. If I go by focal shift, there's a letter O. Those are the hotkeys. So super awesome. You don't even have to remember a lot of these hotkeys because they're right there for you. So if you forget what draw size is, you just go up to it it's S so then you can hit S and then you can use draw size right inside there again hotkeys make us work quicker the quicker we can work the quicker we can change things and fix things and update things and whatever uh, we can also tap the space or hold the space bar and that brings up all of our menus now you can't see it very good because my screen is white so I'm just gonna jump this back to uh, black there we go 
So now you can see my draw size, you can see my focal shift, you can see my Z intensity. Now over here on the left is all the brushes. So if I click on this brush, this shows me all the different kinds of brushes there are. And these are just the default ones. You can actually download different brushes uh, from Pixel Logic or other people who've created them. So one of the brushes that I use a lot is Clay Buildup. And what this one is, um, imagine that this is actually like, I'm trying to zoom in, come on, a little bit faster. Um, imagine this is a ball of clay, right? Have you ever watched the um, Monster Shop, Jim Henson's the Monster Shop, or any of those uh, ones where they're building clay things? They start off with a hunk of clay, and then they just keep adding clay to it until they get the general shape of where they're at. So this clay buildup, that's what it does, is it adds clay to your shape. It will add clay to my shape once it stops thinking. I'm gonna hit escape and see. Um, ZBrush crashes very rarely. That's one of the nice things about it. Um, it might do this, and if I were to click right now, it would probably say, do you want to close it? It's just thinking, okay? We have eight million polygons. I click something that's, I don't know why it did it, but it's just thinking. Um, so if it's life-threatening, I would just wait. Um, it's not, I can just remake that super quick, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, there's two Z brushes on these computers, the 64 and the regular. Either one works. Um, you're not going to find a huge difference in running the 64 over the other one. And then when you open ZBrush, yes, yes, yes. Close that. Um, you'll get this light box thing that pops up. You can just close the light box. So I'm just going to grab a cylinder, drag it out. Here's the hotkey for edit object is T. There we go. I'm going to control D to add my divisions back in. So now I'm up to 131,000, so I should be up to like 500,000 once this is done. There we go. Okay, that should be plenty. So now I'm going to go to my clay build up. I'm going to hit S, make my brush a bit bigger, and then I'm just going to, oops, make it a poly mesh. Thinking, thinking, thinking. All right, I'm gonna take the Z intensity down a smidge. Uh, and then I'm just going to add some clay to this, okay? So what a lot of people will do is that they use this clay brush just to kind of sculpt in the general shape of the character. So if we had a very simple character and we're like, okay, we wanted to add some, some definition in some of these areas, they'll use the clay buildup to add definition to those areas. So like where all your muscles are, they'll just stack clay where the muscles would be and, and find the flow of the shape. So it's a really great tool to be uh, to use to do stuff like that. Because it's not affecting everything else. It's not making it blobby. Um, I also use the... Bum, bum, bum. There's a lot of brushes in here you can kind of play around with to see what they do. Uh, but there's like five that I constantly use. Um, flatten, this is the... Occasionally I'll use flatten. And this literally just like flattens out an area. So if you're like, oh, I need the forehead to be kind of flat. It's kind of bumpy. You can flatten it out. Um, what else? There's some grooming brushes for some fancy stuff. We'll get to those later. We'll get to that later. <laughs> um, bah, bah, bah. Oh, I passed it up. There it is. So this is the damn standard brush. That's what it's called. Um, the guy who made it, his name was Damien, but for whatever reason, he just put damn standard. Um, so this brush is pretty cool because it allows us to do these like little creases. And if I shrink my brush down, and I take my intensity, maybe down a little bit more, you can create these nice little creases right there. So if we're trying to do something like we have lines on our face or uh, around our eyes, really great tool to use because it just kind of adds that little dimple in there without doing uh, too much other stuff. Uh, and then you could add on top of that, there's a pinch. There we go. I'll make the brush a little bigger. And then I could pinch this closer together and create like a little ripple right there. Pretty sweet. All right. Yep. Um, there we go. Now, all the brushes too, like I said, if we hold Alt, it's the opposite. So the damn standard was pushing in. So if I hold Alt and I drag, it's gonna pull out. So now we'll have this like little ridge that pulls out like that. Again, we can play with the focal shift to control how this is affecting it some. It's subtle, but it's there. Okay, 
So that's another brush I'll use. Um, I use the clay buildup one. Um, polish is a nice one. I just kind of like sharpen some of your edges a little bit. It's a really subtle one. I'll use it, usually use that like at the end. Um, smooth. So smooth is a special brush and there are some special brushes in there. So I went here and I went to smooth, but I'm still on the polish brush. Okay. So if I hold down shift, it automatically toggles me to the smooth brush. Okay. So <clears throat> let me jump over here to where my clay is. If I hold shift, I'm in the smooth brush and then I click and drag, it smooths out those areas. So you wouldn't want it to be like bumpy like that, like the clay buildup was, but if I hold shift and drag, it lets me smooth out those areas. Now you're seeing that even though I'm smoothing this out, it's not getting very smooth, it's still kind of rough. This is one of the awesome things about ZBrush 2 is not only can we have like 8 million divisions, but we can also jump back to where we had only a few hundred divisions, okay? So control D was how we add divisions to this. Shift D is how we preview the previous divisions. So if I hold on shift and hit D, come on. Oh, I know what I did. Let me delete that, I'll make a new one. I'll make it a poly mesh. The last one I divided and then made a poly mesh and that didn't like that. So I have to make it a poly mesh, add my divisions, there we go. Then I can hit shift D and if you see that number right there, it's going down. So it's showing me what the lowest resolution was. So I can go back to the very basic shot here, then hold down shift, then smooth it out, and you can see how much easier it is to smooth out that. Then I can go back up the level, so I just hit D, smooth that out. Hit D, smooth that out. So at every level I can kind of smooth it out just to take away some of that stuff until I get to um, a point where I'm happy with the way it's looking. And obviously make the brush bigger makes it a lot easier okay so shift is one of those brushes that allows us just to toggle whichever brush we're in doesn't matter I could be in this one hold down shift and then I can smooth it out draw like that hold shift and then smooth it out okay now this is all the brushes now all the brushes have a hotkey also so if you know what brush you're using you can hit hotkeys to get to it so what I do is I'll hit B to bring up the brush menu. So there's all the brushes. And then if I know that I want the clay buildup, I'll hit C for clay buildup. So that's what it starts with. And then if I look inside here and I find the clay buildup brush, there's a hot key right next to it. So you see that little B? So that's the hot key for the clay buildup. So if I go C, I'm sorry, wrong button. Oh, what am I doing? Change it back to white. There we go. Uh, if I hit B to bring the brushes up, C to show all the C ones, and then B to hit the clay buildup, then I've just jumped to the clay buildup brush. So it's really slow right now, me doing this, but as I work, there we go. I want the move tool, that's the other one I'll use. I hit BMV, and now I can use the move tool to push and pull parts of this out. I want clay buildup again, there we go. Okay, so as you work, get used to using that because again, it's just going to make your work happen a lot quicker. Um, here's Damien Standard. Here's the standard brush, the regular default one. There's Polish. Okay, so that's just me memorizing it. And you're not going to memorize it right away. It's just a matter of, I keep going back to that brush. What's the quick way to do it? And you'll just figure it out as you're working. Okay. So this is the kind of brush you're using. And then this is how that brush is getting applied. So let me go back to my standard brush. And right now it's doing dots. So it's just putting in these little dots along the way, okay? Um, like Photoshop, how you have the, the brush spacing, that's essentially what that is. Um, there's also a drag rectangle and a freehand. So these three I would constantly use for sculpting stuff. These ones are more for um, texturing. So when we get to the texturing part, we're actually gonna be able to color our item or our head inside of here. Um, so in this, let's say I'm on the standard brush and then I go to my drag, my drag rectangle and then I'm gonna load an alpha channel. So all of these are textures or um, transparencies, depth maps, whatever you wanna call them, uh, to control what our brush looks like. And so, so instead of your standard brush just being a circle, I can go down here to the scales thinking again there we go 
I can go to scales and if I click and drag what it's going to allow me to do is position that cr exactly where I want it. So I have like one copy of this and I can be like oh I want that to be like that. Good. And then my next one I'm going to put right here. And then my next one I'll put right there. My next one I'll put right there. Now for something like that I may not want to use the dots because as I use this you can see what it's going to look like. Okay, I have basically no control over keeping that thing looking planar or flat on those. But again, this is something that could be a cool way to kind of show a um, frog skin or something like that. That's kind of neat. Um, there's also a flower. Boom, there we go, cool. Now with all of these, just like the brushes, um, so they have an alpha library. So those were alpha channels, alpha maps. Maybe to load um, on the Pixel Logic website. That's who make ZBrush. You can download a whole bunch of them. So if you're like, oh, I need human skin, or I need veins, or I need whatever, you can go there and find it. Maybe if it works. There it goes. So here's all the different um, categories that they have. So if I go to something like skins. Here's all the different skin patterns that they have. And if I click on one of these, you can see this one is dragon skin. So this is a different dragon skin. Um, this one is another dragon skin. This one is scales. Excuse me. <clears throat> this one is elephant skin or wrinkles. And then here are some veins. So if you're like, oh, I have my character, I want to put it like a wicked vein, like in his neck or his forehead or whatever, you can find a cool vein and just drop that right onto his head. And all of these you can actually create. So these are simply just black and white images. That's all they are. So if you found an image of someone that had a really defined texture and you wanted to use it, you could go into Photoshop, make a black and white image. Um, black is no movement, white is movement, and then the grays in between um, are that transition area. Um, so something like a brick wall, if you're like, oh, I want to make a brick wall, you could take a picture of a brick wall and then make the bricks white, the grout black, and then everything else kind of like an in-between. Um, then you'd have a brick wall texture on there. So lots of cool stuff. Um, there's people that even make money off of this. I'm not going to be able to find it because I never can. Um, I put Telfas. There we go. Um, there are people, there it is, Bad King. I did find it. Um, who just sell this stuff. They just make textures and they sell them. So here's one that he has. Um, oops cracks so he just made a whole set of them for cracks and you could download these ones for free you can download these ones for free you could download the button ones for free and then he has ones you can pay for too so they're like five bucks each which is not a horrible price especially considering the time you might be saving by doing that and he has them all kind of categorized here too which is uh, pretty awesome um, at GM and Chrysler and Ford, um, if they're doing like stitching and stuff, they'll actually like sculpt stitches on the seats to make them look realistic. So here's a creation kit, uh, decimated mesh, tank treads, tires, pretty cool stuff. <coughs> okay, so now uh, back to your question, what is all of this stuff down here? So I'm going to reset all of this back up there. So if I go to anything in here that says IMM, so you see how this says IMM? Um, that stands for insert mesh uh, material or something. Um, so if I go to one of these, which you said, what is the head? As I click and drag, oops, I have to make a different mesh just because this one has divisions on it. Hang on, there we go. And as I click and drag, <laughs> there's a head. <laughs> and it's actually like a 3D head. Okay, so for this project, obviously I don't want you to use this head, but for future projects, you definitely could use something like that as a starting point. It's pretty amazing. Now here's what's even more amazing about this. Watch when I hit M. Here's all the pieces. Oh my god. So there's the torso. So I could also drag out a torso. Oh god. <laughs> and then I could hit M again and I could drag out an eye. It's like Mr. Potato Head. It is. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Alright, so we have all these different body parts that we can use. 
Now there's also some neat ones like um, this one here. This is clothing hardware. So if I go to the arm, come on, and I hit M to see what I have here, there's like snaps. So I could go here and say, oh, I want to add a snap right there and there and there. So look how easy it is to place those. Imagine if we were in Maya and we duplicated this and we were like, oh, we want to, you know, put these things exactly in these certain spots. It would be a pain to do that. Is he a robot and or a G.I. Joe? No, he just snaps himself in at night. Oh. Okay. <laughs> That's how his blankets work. <laughs> there we go. So now he has those little snaps like actually like on his arm, right? So any of these IMM ones are great because they're just they're already there. Here's one for um, dragon. Um, there's a tail, there's some bones. Pretty fancy. Do you like move the tail, like like the bottom of the tail up to make it like pointed or something? Um, I can go to my move brush, and it's just geometry. So as I'm moving this, it's just moving all the stuff. Okay. Now it's not like individual pieces; it's like one big piece. But for you know, as quick as that took us, you know, bam, there we go. <laughs> You can do simple animations like turntables. You can't actually like animate the character inside there. Um, ZBrush is strictly a modeling and texturing tool. You can do rendering of still images or turntables. Um, if you wanted your character to be animated, you have to take them out, bring them back into Maya, and do your animation in there. Are we texturing inside of ZBrush? Yes. Okay. We're going to texture it and render it inside of ZBrush. Oh, um, so yeah, there's lots of stuff that we can use. So any of those IMM ones, um, really cool stuff you can play around with just to see uh, what's available? Here's one for gears. Yes, I know, make it a mesh. So look at all the different gears that are right here. And again, you can just kind of like use these as extra stuff if you want to add that in there. Um, there's this guy. His name is Meets Myers. Meets Myers. Spell it right. M I E I R or something like that. It should come up. M E I E R. M E I R. So what he does, he does these like really um, intricate sculptures inside of ZBrush, like that. Why does that remind you of Alice in Wonderland? I don't know. I mean, it's the, these ones, little the skulls are <laughs> the teeth are skulls. So he does these like really cool, intricate things inside there. All these like little meshes and wires and whatever else. It's pretty sweet. Um, yeah. So that's what those are over there. We'll get into more of the buttons and all the other stuff that we're playing with um, as we go. Um, so now what we need to do is figure out, now that we know the basics of ZBrush and how it kind of works, um, how do we get our model from Maya into ZBrush? So if I go over to the import and I go down here, this is gonna show me all the formats that it'll take inside. So go Z, OBJ, MA, Mesh A, and Mesh B. OBJ and MA are the two formats that we would commonly use. An MA is a Maya file, and OBJ is a common 3D file we can take to different platforms. When we went from Maya into Keyshot, we saved it as an OBJ. Okay, So most of the time, OBJ is going to be our friend, and it's going to work for us exactly the way we want. So I'm going to go to there. I'm going to open up my character, which is number two. And he's thinking, there he is. So I'm going to take the character out of here and bring him into um, ZBrush. Now we don't need to smooth him out. Okay, ZBrush will smooth him out. We'll be able to go from here to there inside of ZBrush. So we don't want to add any additional smoothing um, on top of this. We leave everything the way it is. I'm going to export my selection. And I need to make this an OBJ. I could try an MA. I tried it yesterday. I already know the MA is not going to work. It's going to give me an error and say something about faces. Um, if your OBJ doesn't show up, we need to go to Window Settings Preferences Plugin Manager, and just like before, we need to enable the OBJ export. Load, auto load. So now I can go to Export Selection. I can say send this face. A brush. Make sure it's an OBJ. Everything here is fine. Export. 
Okay. So now when I go into ZBrush and I say import, I go and I just find that file. <laughs> I do. <laughs> yes, I will show it after. Uh, send this file to, paste to ZBrush. All right, so I'm going to get an error that says, not an error, just a warning saying, hey, you have some faces in here that are not uh, have more than four sides. What do you want to do with them? So I'm just going to say make them quads and triangles. That's all we have to do. So now my head is over here. So it doesn't import it into the workspace. It's just over there. Everything in ZBrush is considered a tool. So when I was sculpting all that stuff before, it's making a tool for it. So imagine that like those snaps and heads and whatever else, those are simply just assets or tools. So if I take the head, which is right here, and I just click and drag, there he is. He's beautiful. He is. So I can hit edit, so I can spin around him, and then I can spin around the character. Whee! All right, so what I need to do now, before I start sculpting, is I need to do a little bit of cleanup. Because right now, if I go to my move tool and I pull this, it's going to pull the eye, too. And I don't want the eye to be pulled. I want the eyeball itself to stay there. So under the sub tool, this is where it shows all my pieces of geometry. So kind of like a layering system, um, that's what that's for. So I'm going to go down here to split, and I'm going to say split to parts. And so what it's going to do, yes, find everything that's a separate piece and just put it on its own layer. So now I have one layer for one eye, one layer for the other eye, and then I have the head. So if I click on the head, now I can move this without moving the actual eyeball itself. Now, one of the reasons I did that too is I want the eyeballs to stay round. If they get deformed, it's gonna look really funky, um, especially when I'm trying to match up the eye lid shape, it's gonna look really odd. So uh, most likely I'm gonna delete those things just because I know what my shape is gonna look like at the end-ish. Um, so I want to keep that open. So I'm gonna go here and my first thing I do is I use the move tool. So the move tool is great for kind of roughing in what I want the head's shape to look like. So if I decided that I wanted, um, let's say this part of the head to be a little bit wider, I can pull it over there. Now, I want to do both sides at the same time. There is a mirroring function, but ZBrush is so quick, I wanna just do both sides at the same time. So under transform, under symmetry, which hotkey is X, I just click it on. And now when I click and drag, it pulls both sides, okay? So I'm gonna go in here, and I'm just gonna kinda sculpt some of this it up. I'll pull this down too. So you can see how using this base mesh we can basically sculpt um, a lot of different kinds of, of characters or creatures out of this. I need to pull this out. He's kind of getting a dimple right there. Pull that out. All right, so now I need divisions. So I hit Control D, and that adds divisions. Now when I added divisions, because the space between these vertices and these ones were so far apart, it like shrunk it into the shoulder. That's no big deal because I can always just pull it back out again, okay? I'm gonna shrink my brush some. I'm gonna give him kind of like a furry, angry eye. I like his nose. I can pull his nose out too. Let's tweak his nose some. His nose is actually pretty flat, isn't it? Yeah. Let's pull that it looks kind of broken. out some like this. It is. I don't know what happened there. That must have been my model was kind of tweaked a bit. There we go. All right, so I'm going to, let's see what I like that. That's good. All right, so I'm going to hit Control D again. That adds more divisions. His forehead's looking kind of flat. Um, instead of using the move brush here, I may have to go with like a bigger move brush, but then that's going to affect the eye. This is where I would start to jump into some of my other tools. So like the clay buildup here, um, I'm going to start using that. And when I use clay buildup, when I use anything besides move, I switch to a tablet. Move is great because I can just click and drag and move it, but with clay buildup I want more control. So um, make sure my Z intensity is not crazy high, and then I can just start adding in some shape there. So just by adding in a little bit of shape into that, whoa, I tried to flatten it out. It smooths that out. There we go. Now I'm gonna come over here to the side. Remember we talked about that muscle that comes in right here behind the ear? 
and it goes down right to your collarbone. We kind of lost it. So I'm going to go with my clay buildup, and I'm going to put it back in. And this is still working with symmetry, so both sides are affected. And I lost the jaw a little bit, so I'm going to push the jaw in. Maybe I'll just knock this bit in a little bit more. I'm just using Alt as I click and drag to just push that in some. And what you don't want to do is go into too much detail too quick. Like, it's very um, tempting to just kind of like, I'm going to just throw in a million divisions and just start tweaking. Don't do that. You want to have as few divisions as possible to start and then work your way up to more divisions. I also need to take that smooth down. My smooth is at 100 for intensity. So I hold shift and I can pull that down. Now it's not going to smooth it out as much. There we go. There we go. That's nicer. Okay. So then back here I'm going to go to my move brush. See how quickly I got to the move brush? And I'm just going to shape the back of the skull. Let me pull this up some. If it helps too, what you can do is load in um, on your other screen. This is why I tell people. Like they say, well, can I get can I get images inside here that I can use as reference? You could. They're not very nice. They, they're kind of like horrible to work with. What you need to do is get used to working off of your other screen. Throw like 25 images on your other screen of areas you're working on and use that as reference for while you're working. So I'm going to add some more divisions to this. Whoa, he looks kind of weird now. He's got a turtleneck on. Um, let me go back to my um, clay buildup, and I'm just going to push his neck in. That's the problem, is his neck is so thick. There we go. So I'm just holding Alt and just clicking that to get rid of some of that detail. He could have just been <coughs> that way. He could have. <laughs> there we go. That looks nice. Give him a little bit more cheek here. Smooth it out. More cheek. Let's go into the nose and just add some nostrils into there. So I'm just going to draw in some nostrils. So you can see where your figure class, being able to study like each part, um, would really come in handy. I'm going to push these in, so I'm going to hold Alt with the clay buildup, and then I could just push those pieces in, and then use regular clay buildup just to add some more shape to that. And then his lips, I kind of like lost the lips. So I'm going to go in here and go with the big clay buildup. And I'm just going to try to keep it away from that edge. Because I want to build up the outside of this. There we go. A little bit of smoothing on the bottom just to help blend it in. And now we'll go to the top, a little bit smaller, and do the same thing. The clay buildup is actually a was that? Thank you. Yeah, the clay buildup is actually a square brush, like right here. The alpha is square, so it actually um, is really good for getting into these tight areas where we have a line happening. There you go. Let's pull this in more. We'll look at it from the side view. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna switch back to my move tool, and just kind of tweak some of this stuff, just because his nose is looking a little bullish. You add a little bit more geometry here, just kind of puff that area out and give a little bit more volume. Um, don't try to get too much detail in one area. Like, don't spend an hour trying to get the nostrils to look right. Bounce around. If you watched any people like actually sculpt out of a out of a hunk of clay, they're all over the place. They're just like, let's put the hand here, put the arm here, put this here, and they're getting a general gesture of what the character is supposed to look like. And then they'll go back and tweak it a little bit further, and then tweak it a little bit further. But they're always bouncing around a lot. Um, I really don't like how his nose is kind of stuck up like that. So just move tool. There we go. There we go. And I'm going to go back to the move tool. Just kind of round this out a bit. Push this in a little bit. There we go. Alright, so that's looking pretty good. All right, so this is going to be my first level of detail on here. All right, I'm not going to do any uh, ears on this, uh, but I can add some other stuff. So if I'm like, this is working out pretty good, let me add in 
um, some ripples or something to him. So I'm trying to add some ripples with that um, Damien standard brush. But you can see that I just don't have the divisions for it. There's not enough lines, not enough vertices there. So I'm going to subdivide it again. Eyebrows? No, there's just kind of like some weird alien type pattern on him. Okay. There we go. So something like that, maybe Klingon-ish. <laughs> and then I can, of course, just kind of push these down some too. And I could also go into my pinch and too big of a brush. Just kind of pinch that a little bit. And then I can blend in these corners here. So it doesn't look like they're kind of jutting out from the surface, just blending in so it looks a little bit more natural. Does it have to be an alien or can it be like a character? No, it can be a character. Okay. The idea is that they're going to have detail to them, so like, eventually we're going to add pits and um, skin pores and whatever else to the character. Okay, so not like a cartoon cookie. Right, right. Okay. Do you uh, have a fur and ZBrush? There is fur and ZBrush too. I'll show that in a second. Um, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to add some um, lines here. So one of the other pitfalls that people run into is that we know, or we think we know what's happening, and so we just draw it. So if you're trying to draw lines on the side of the face, you might just go like that. And that obviously doesn't look realistic at all. Well, okay? An alien. <laughs> right. Still. <laughs> so one of the things about your facial skin is that the reason we have lines is because our skin is actually like sagging, like the muscles are sagging in our face. And so these lines that happen on the side of this is from this area here um, sagging. So if I just drew in kind of like a sag, right into that and then I just kind of smoothed it out. You'll see how automatically just kind of like drawing that sag in there I get a much more realistic looking line that goes around the mouth. Okay, And that applies to anything that you're looking at. Um, uh, Ryan Kingsley. Kingsley and something like that. Close. L-I-E-N. Dang it. Um, so Ryan Kingsleyan, Lion, whatever his name is, um, he is a ZBrush sculptor. Um, he has a lot of free videos on YouTube where he just talks about anatomy and he just talks about um, how the facial muscles control what the face actually looks like. So if you have some time, um, watch some of those. He's a traditionally trained too, so he knows how to sculpt traditionally, he knows how to paint, and then he also knows how to take that and apply it to ZBrush. Um, one of the things he talks about a lot is just knowing all of the muscles like he literally knows every single muscle in the face and what it does so if someone says this character is older and they're really worried about something he knows what muscles would go into making that character look worried and he can emphasize those um, specific things here's one anatomy of the face that's a perfect one and all of these are done inside of zbrush and he breaks it down into pretty simple terms um, a lot of these are just like really really fast modeling and he's just talking about um, what's happening. So here he's showing all the different muscles. And then at the end of it, I'm sure he has something that looks like face muscles. <laughs> Very sweet. So if you get a chance, definitely check those out. Um, at the very least, have a picture up of what the face muscles look like. If you have that up, that will definitely help kind of gear <laughs> you or guide you into what is supposed to be uh, happening. Oops. Like it would be very odd to have, you know, just something like this happening because the muscles here are different than the muscles there. And you may spend, once you get to that level, you may spend uh, a good few minutes kind of sculpting in some of this detail. That's too much. Because once you get to this level of, now I'm adding in these little marks, um, like two here would probably be good. Where I can start to come in and just gradually draw in some of these lines. And some of these with the clay buildup, it actually looks pretty decent when you just leave it with the clay buildup without any smoothing on it. Because you get the feeling like you have skin texture. If you look at skin textures, you have these little lines and these little like movements um, on your skin. And 
And so you can see just by adding this very subtly inside the face, um, it's already starting to look a lot more realistic, a lot more like he actually has some sort of skin on top of him um, instead of just nothing right there. All right, cool. So we would just continue working on this, adding more stuff, adding more stuff. Um, I'm going to save my project now, so I'm just going to hit Control S, head the brush. Thursday. Okay. So your goal, this is at 77,000. So I haven't even touched the millions yet. I'm still in the thousands. And I'm still just kind of tweaking what's happening inside here. So don't go crazy on your divisions once you get to ZBrush. Keep it low. Keep it like 77,000 is a good spot to be at for your first one. Yours isn't going to be exactly 77, but it'll be around that. Okay. So that's where I'm going to stop this. Um, you need to make sure you save your stuff into the correct spot and all that. Um, when you save in ZBrush, there's a couple spots like this save as is not the same as control S. Under document, save as is not the same as control S. Okay, it's horrible where they have it set up. You have to hit control S. Um, and then you just hit control S every time you save. And there you go.